A very warm good morning to one and all present here, taking part in the second day of seven-day faculty development program (FDP). I am Shweta Singh. It is my great honor to host this seven-day international faculty development program. Honorable Chief Patron, Mr. Manish Kumar Kapsime, Chairman, Grizzly College of Education. Honorable Patron Mr Avinash Kumar Seth Secretary Grizzly College of Education Honorable Patron Dr Sanjita Ma'am Deputy Director Grizzly College of Education Honorable Speaker Professor Dr Ismail Jain and Honorable Convener Professor Dr B C Swain Principal Grizzly College of Education I Wesley College of Education welcome the teacher educators principals teachers and participants from all over the globe in this 7 day international faculty development program on teaching pedagogy recent trends in teaching learning process Wesley College of Education was founded in 2009 with the visionary and wise guidance of honorable mr avinash kumar sheth and honorable mr manish kumar kapsime to provide quality teacher education the college was recently accredited by nas under the supervision of honorable deputy director dr sanjita kumari and pay my gratitude for her excellent performance Unfortunately Dr Anand Kumar Arya was not able to join in the FDP and Professor Dr Ismail Zain from Malaysia will take his place Now I would request our honorable convener principal Professor Dr Swain sir to welcome the dignitaries please over to you good morning to all those participating in this international online faculty development program esteemed chief patron mr monish kumar kapsime chairman vigil college of education esteemed patron mr avinash kumar seth secretary vigil college of education esteemed patron dr sanjita kumari deputy director vigil college of education i welcome all participants from india and abroad on behalf of the organizing committee of this international faculty development program on teaching pedagogy recent trends in teaching learning process vigil college of education is an institute of repute established under the visionary and prolific guidance of mr avinash kumar seth and mr manish kumar kapsime which has been imparting quality teacher education since 2009 we are fortunate enough to have honorable speaker professor ismail jain former professor of malaysia teacher institute of education director dynamic global vision director of and founder project cids i uh, and first holder of malaysia special excellent teachers award former senior committee of malaysia teacher competency board former malaysia key personnel in education technology wall of fame award from university sense Malaysia an academician for excellence he is in depth understanding of his subject matter and the passion of knowledge is best known to his colleagues and the students we are really fortunate to have among us us today thank you so much sir for your gracious presence thank you
Many many thanks sir for your enthusiastic speech. Faculty development program aims at equipping teachers with skills and knowledge that are essential for inculcating professional values in students and guiding and monitoring their progress towards professional career. It aims to focus on different modes. of approach in order to meet the professional challenges of life in order to become not merely a trained professional but also a better citizen fdp help the capacity enhancement and continuous knowledge on upgradation training program for people working in different capacities and roles the program build research training teachers administration competence and holistic development of teachers the grizzly college of education always takes initiatives and enhances the ability and of faculty faculty development should be the at the heart of any higher education institution in order to foster a productive culture It is my honor to invite a brilliant scholar, honorable speaker, Professor Dr. Ismail Zain, professor, former professor at Malaysia Teachers Institute of Education, director, Dynamic Global Vision, director and founder project CIDS, first holder of Malaysia Special Excellent Teachers. award former senior committee of malaysia teachers committee board former malaysia key personal educational technology wall of fame award from university saints malaysia and academician par excellence his in depth understanding of the subject matter and the passion of knowledge is the best known to his colleagues and his students we are really fortunate to have him amongst us today over to you sir okay uh i just want to check out whether my my voice is uh, audible can you hear me really uh is it better can you hear me yes sir i can hear you okay thank you very much mr sota singh um very good day to the honorable patrons to the honorable guests and all the participants uh i would like to express my gratitude uh, for inviting me even though in the last minute but i appreciate that uh, i always like to share Uh, my experience with all the participants, and um, uh, I hope what I want to give deliver today um, may benefit you in some way, somehow, or matter. And also, I would like to uh, congratulate the uh, faculty uh, for being able, uh, very proactive, uh, having so many um, international uh, conference seminars. Uh, And, and and now you are successfully having a seven days uh, seminars and it's not that easy and also I congratulate all the participants who are waiting patiently and join the uh, conference uh, so that we can get something we can share something for our students for the betterment of our teaching and learning uh let me share my uh, presentation to you thank you sir even uh, in the busy schedule you have joined us at the last moment it no problem many many no thanks to you sir uh can you see now yes sir i can see you no the um the presentation Sorry. what sir uh no sir no problem I can't see your PPT, sir. 
Okay, can you see my PPT? Yes, sir. Now it's visible. Now it's visible, sir. Okay. Can you can you see that? Okay. Yes, sir. Now I can see that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, I understand that um, yeah, the theme of the uh, uh, conference is about uh, teaching pedagogy, recent trend in teaching learning process. Well, um, um, that's supposed to also address to Dr. Adnan, uh, who are supposed to have the session and I'm taking over. Of course, I will try to give my own uh, experience to share with all of you. So in this case, I have chosen a very important topic. That is, we talk about integrative learning and we are moving towards approaching a Buka world. We will, I will explain to you what is a Buka world. And um, I'm not really to uh, focus on what are the teaching pedagogy, you know, but we are looking forward to what are we are supposed to do uh, in the teaching and learning now and we'll see what is the situation now with, that will change and create the pedagogy. I mean, of course, there are many, many recent trends in teaching and learning process, but we are looking more than that uh, where I will discuss uh, for you now. So, we are live in a Buka world. What is Buka world? This is a very acronym and this is a very important uh, due to the situation of the current uh, education development. So, what does Buka mean? One is what we have, what we call it volatility. Volatility, that is the changes that occurs much more often than before and require continuous analysis and evaluation. So, this is what is happening now that we cannot wait because the change is taking place very fast, you know, and it also due to changes that associate with environment, associate with social and political changes. So we cannot wait. We cannot just uh, say that we use the recent pedagogy. We want to talk about education, but we have to think something else. For example, what happened to us in the uh, COVID pandemic, you know, people all over the world are not prepared, even though in 1920s we have already experienced that. Uh, that is the Spanish uh, flu, which have already to, uh, taken place about two years. Okay, so everything is changes. So same thing. Once uh, this uh, COVID uh, pandemic has taken place, we are not prepared. We are not prepared. Not only we, but all over the world, we are not prepared. So we start doing it, and you know, then we start to create a new thing. We create new thing. We are not following the 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 path, the reason. The pedagogies, but we have great new thing. We have all this uh, 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 learning uh, uh, through media. Uh, we have this online learning. We have uh, uh, home based learning. All these are new thing that is catching up once the the changes have take place. Okay. Secondly, we are also uh, living in a world of uncertainty. We are not able to ambiguously predict and prioritize factor that may influence the situation. Okay. We cannot say that. Well, this is uh, this is very important. No, we cannot say that anymore because everything is important. We cannot privatize, privatize, or this is uh, to be first, this is a second. No, we have because we are so uncertain about what will happen in our world. And thirdly, we have complexity. So there are a number of factors that determine the development of process increase significantly or become unknown. If I told you just now, we also have like weather changes. Uh, we have, um, uh, you know, if we have a flood, what happened? We have a drought, what happened? And we have a social um, uh, a complexity and many, many other things. So we are, we are living in this world and it has some a very important effect to our education system, especially all the education players, teachers, lecturers, and etc. And ambiguity, that is information is difficult to interpret. Past experience is not applicable anymore. So we cannot we cannot depend on what happened in the past. We are looking forward what will happen in the future. Of course, of course, we learn from the past, but we cannot depend on the past. We have to go forward. That's why I'm saying that there is one 
uh, there's no one pedagogy that suits us. But we have to see what will happen in the future and we have to create it. Now, VOCA and values. This acronym has emerged to describe future that will consist of greater volatility, uncertain complexity and ambiguity. Actually, this VOCA world, this acronym began in the late 1990s. It's already been uh, how many years? In 20th century. Now we are in 21st century in a military context. So many things actually in education we learn from the military context, from the military. You know, like design instruction, we call it instructional design. All these aspects come from military because, you, as you know, the military must have something advanced to protect the country. So they try to invent, they try to create a new things, a new strategy so that, you know, they will be able to defend the country. So same thing like we education, we have to invent a new thing, a new strategy. We just cannot follow, wait and use whatever that we have before that. So uh, that will influence uh, the emerging ideas on strategic leader, you know, in the wide of uh, organization from for profit corporation to educational institution and government system. So generally it wants that our world becoming increasingly difficult to predict and manage. I hope you you agree with this statement. It's now it's very difficult to predict and measure. So we have to go on. We must have creativity. We must have the innovation, you know, and we must have some, uh, you know, some knowledge on what happened in the future. Okay. And actually, I, I got it from the four dimensional education center for curriculum redesign, where I've had some collaboration with them. Well, then we'll see what is the effects on education. First, education system are evolving fast because of the demand. You know, uh, I'm sure because uh, the population grown, a lot of uh, new technology needed, a lot of skill needed. So it is very fast and evolving. And also because of the, uh, the, the development of the education itself. So in the past, education was about teaching people something. You know, that's the past. Teaching the people, the students, to learn various subjects, to know how to calculate in mathematics, to know how to uh, read, you know, uh, 3R, read, write, and read, uh, and writing, you know. So this that is the basic that sometimes, but now it has been changed. We are not take, teaching mathematics per, sub, per se, but we are trying to see how mathematics can help the student in future career we are talking about inter become entrepreneur so the student should be exposed to this entrepreneurship program in the mathematics so that is just for example so the second one is that now we is about making sure that individual develop a reliable compass and navigation skill meaning is that you know they must have a destination you must have a, a, a vision and vision so that they can have their career, they can achieve, they can get their job in a simple way in the world of, of Bukha world, you know. So that is a, a very important uh, aspect in education, especially for teacher education, how you want to make sure, how you want to guide, how you want to guide the student to achieve, you know, uh, their career in this uh, uh, situation. And yeah, if we compare again in, in a generation ago, teachers could expect that what they thought would last for a lifetime for the, the students. So last time we thought is that what we teach is enough for them to survive in the world, but not now. What we teach them now, they, what they want to be now, that won't be happen, it won't be a reality in the future. Okay, now we say in today, school need to prepare students for more rapid economic and social changes. Yeah? If you take for India, you can find what is the issue, the economic and social change, and then ever before. For job that have not yet been created to use technology that has not been invented. So we cannot, you know, simply use whatever technology we have 
we cannot use whatever pedagogy that we have but we have to think something we have to think something to provide the the, the, the students uh, that they need in the future and we have to also make some prediction what type of job that they need in order to tackle or to solve the economic and social change and uh, also to solve social problems that we don't yet know with arise now we know what is your social problem but in 20 years time 30 years time we are not sure what we are going to be so this is a very a great challenge for teachers to teach that subject but of course we say that we are not only teaching the basic but we must go beyond that so in that case we want to be an effective learning how to be an effective learning using many many pedagogies okay this as i've shown before so we try to uh, uh, do some some reflection learning is not the product of teaching uh -huh. so as i told you just now both we, we we teach the student but sometimes learning is not will be uh, 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 real to what we have learned now in the future so whatever we teach now it not be uh, relevant in the future learning is the product of activity of learners the word activity meaning that we have to choose a lot of activities explore a lot of activities that activities will become a pedagogy if you ask me what type of pedagogy that we want of course you know a lot of that pedagogy to name a few we have differentiated learning of course we are focusing focusing on the student-centered learner-centered we have of design thinking we have this computational learning uh, thinking a lot of approach differentiated you know and we have a, a, a lot of other approaches but the most important is that it's not that approach that we are going to depend on but we have to create our own we can create the activity that is a combination of all the pedagogy so activity is most important it's no point having uh, knowing all the pedagogy but there is no activity if the teacher is sit in the front of class stage of the stage and teach there is no activity to the learners so that is that is we will not be relevant for the student and then the, we're talking about technology of course technology will not replace great teachers this one also i have, I have already uh, show you in the previous uh, seminar but i like this uh, quotation you know technology will not replace great teachers but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational that's why i told you that it's not that technology will change the style of teaching you know but the teacher itself the style of teacher the creativity of teacher and when she can use the technology that is more activities that will be a great change transformation in, the edu in education technology alone won't change that the education and uh, bill gates myself also saying that technology is not a just is just the tool in terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them the teacher is the most important you know like uh, doing some uh you know uh online learning uh MOOCs and so many other modes of learning but that is only you know motivating them to learn but but teachers is the more important to be then understand how it will adopt and adapt in their future life and i put uh, something here the combination of all here i've shown last last uh, uh, conference the collaborative work of human potential so from those three definition actually i come up with the collective work of human potential one is collaborative you know you collaborate everything your human potential what is a human potential you have your uh, your, your creativity you have your ideas you have your thinking powers all this that is a human right? and pedagogical enrichment meaning that you have more other pedagogy even though you can create your own if you are rich in pedagogy meaning that if you are rich in how to deliver how to teach the student that is pedagogy it doesn't matter whether it has been created or not that is not important the important that you must have the way how to 
teach the student how to make the student understand the situation now and also the future situation with the infusion of the current technological advancement in educating learning. So together with your technology, what you have now, it doesn't mean that uh, you must have a very sophisticated technology. No, anything that can help the learners with your potential, with your creativity, and with your own pedagogical uh, knowledge, that will very much uh, give an effect to the learning and teaching. That is uh, effective teaching and learning. So, model of effective teaching and learning. Uh, this is uh, one. Uh, this is a 2006. Uh, they call it a TPEX model. Misha and Kohler. I think everybody knows that. Where he said that uh, you know the three component technology, pedagogy, and content knowledge, uh, when it meets there, and it will, uh, you know, uh, become uh, uh, very effective, uh, the combination of three uh, knowledge. Okay, but that is 2006. So I, I have put it uh, a, a different uh, 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 domain here. Is this is what I'm talking just now. Domain of effective learning teaching, where first you have the human potential here. You have a subject, the whole the subject, you have your mind, all your creativities. But if you have your pedagogies here and your have your technologies around here, that will be a very effective teaching and learning. So the human potential toward the subject, then you have a pedagogies, you have technologies, then it will be very effective. Well, now when we say about the technology. Uh, when we talk about um, uh, uh, pedagogy. So we are coming to creativity and innovation. We cannot separate it. What is that? Actually, creativity is the thinking of new things. Innovation is doing new things. So there are two things. Creativity is thinking new things which has not existed yet. Innovation is new, new things. And if you want something new, you have to stop doing something old. Well, if you come back to uh, education, you have a lot of uh, pedagogies, recent pedagogies. So if you're something new, you must create new. You cannot follow the old pedagogy that you won't be uh, 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 excellent. And actually, all these two, two things from these two definitions is the ability to take existing objects and combine them in different ways for a new purpose. That is creativity. If you do the same thing, it's not creativity. It's not innovation. But you must take something as something that you are existing now and combine it in different way. This is pedagogy. This is pedagogy. In different way, pedagogy, uh, technology are coming here for new purpose. This is innovation. This is creativity. This is a product that will guide, you know, your student in future career. For example, this I'm, I'm showing you some few examples. I do have a few things. Uh, maybe about five minutes, ten minutes. So this is a for example, a very basic example. How does we teach them creativity? This is a sort of a pedagogy. First, we talk about reshaping. When we have something round, something uh, uh, round um, uh, object, you can make it into different object. So this is creativity. You know, you can make it into star. From just a round thing, it becomes star. So this is creativity. Same thing. Now, interpretation. From round thing, you can interpret. It becomes cylinder, cylinder, you know. And from round thing, when you put something, you can see here a different interpretation. This is sad faces, angry faces. Maybe this is uh, maybe a, a smiling or a very excited. So you can see how interpretation will create innovation and creativity from just a one subject. Okay, again, from one this subject, we go to the next one. How we associate it, this is creativity, the product that we want to uh, have it. So you have watches, you have all the cooking pans, you have tires. You know? So this is the association, how you associate it. So you must have a pedagogy when you teach your student how to associate from one object to a something use utensil you can use it 
or you can think that what are the things that you can be used in 20 years time what are the product in 30 40 years time so that that is the thing so when you have this product so you know what is the job this is a carpenter if you're talking about the old one so all this all this tire so this is a job for them to think so the student will think about how to design a tire in the future in in uh, maybe in 2050 how to design a table in in 2050 you know how to use cooking pan all the uh, kitchen utensil whether you have kitchen or not at that time or you know all the the, the drone with river to the the the, the, the foods uh, so all these are association not just students to to think now current but the students should think what will happen in 50 years time and what are the job that they need to create you know it's not just a designer but you know something else okay now again application you know those application and creativity become innovation so this is example that from those shape it become an application you know this is the past nobody used this before but because of the process of the creativity and application then you have all this innovation some other example this is we taking the past those people who have no innovation no ideas when you see the bird he will create the plane so he he sees something else but he creates something else for the future maybe this one about 100 years ago 200 years ago This is the Burj Al Arab, that is a tower of Arabs in Dubai. You know how these men have done it, you know, first in the world by reflecting, you know, this vessel uh, in the past. Okay, this is how. So, what the job will be created here, what you need here, the more, more job, new job. Okay, innovation again. Can see here from from the the shape you no know, from the shape that i put just now it become round it can become cylindrical it can be, become a different shape but from that shape he create the house that is happened in the, in japan uh, in 2010 so you can see how uh, 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 innovation uh, creativity important and how you are going to shape the student here. This is involved mathematics, this is involved uh, uh, history, this is involved uh, environmental science, everything subject. Now what we are talking about multi, multidisciplinary. Ah, they are coming up multidisciplinary. We are not talking just science, just mathematics, but all this multidisciplinary in order to make our student available, keep relevant in the future world. And this is also uh, in, in Dubai, I've been, uh, uh, they, we call it Miracle Garden. This is a photo that which I took it when I went to Dubai a few years ago. And these are all the something, uh, what we have now, you know, you have umbrella, but the way the creativity put it become one of the world attraction, you know, in the garden. So that is what we say, the ability to take existing object. You have umbrella, you have a, a flower pot and combine them in different ways, you see, Pot, you put it down, but now pot up. You see, it's different thinking. That is a that is the creativity. That is a creative thinking. You know, design thinking. Uh, that's what we are teaching the student now. Those are the pedagogies we are talking now. But this pedagogy will apply in a future use, future product. So and way for new purpose. So now this purpose is to make a decoration uh, instead of just putting down. So this is a very good example how creativity takes place with a different purposes. And this one also same in, in Dubai, you can see. Plain, they have turned it into garden, you can see. And how this is supermarket, there is a water falling in and you can put person here. You only see this person in, in TV, uh, the Astra man flying in the sky, but this one is flying in the um, water falling in the uh, shopping complex. So this is a very, uh, very good uh, uh, example. And also, one more, the image here, same thing. We see animals in zoo, but now they're putting, putting, uh, putting animals in the garden and with some flowers. That's also in uh, Dubai, which I visited uh, recently. 
So now, effective learning, we are coming to the end now. And how um, teaching requirements solution to the book hour. First, we have a professional development. What you are doing now is a professional development that you need. Teachers need to know more. It's not just a subject matter, but you need to know other things. You must know how to relate with your uh, country's progress and also not only country's progress, but you must know what's happening in the world. That is a professional development. And the outcome will be, you know, you want to establish uh, students, which is, uh, we call it uh, globally competitive learners, able to adopt and adapt in their future career and future living. So what we need now, we need now the effective learning framework. Now you are not only teaching knowledge, but you are teaching skill to them. You are teaching and you have to mold their character and you have to talk about meta uh, cognition that is thinking power. That is for them, education center for power. So this is part of a, a framework of learning competencies that student needs in order to be relevant in a future uh, undertaking. So uh, again, here, which I, I put up, and the question here is that teaching pedagogy, recent trend in teaching learning process, what is that? So through what I've gone through, there is a lot of uh, teaching uh, pedagogies but why we must just see the past. So what is a new thing? I put a question mark. It's up to you to decide what are the uh, pedagogies that should be combined together and produce a new uh, uh, pedagogy in order to tackle the solution or, or, or become a, a solution for the student to stay relevant for their future uh, undertaking. So with that, you uh, would like to and my session i hope this session gives some ideas even though i didn't really put what are the trend but this is uh, uh, to uh, to make your yourself thinking uh, reflecting so that you have uh, ideas how you are going to pursue your professional development so that your students and your teachers and your country will be in a, a progress uh, towards excellence thank you very much and i would like to uh, um, I apologize if uh, anything that I do, uh, the, the point that I put up will uh, not uh, up to up to your not up to your expectations. So I'm sorry for that. Thank you very much. Back to uh, Miss Sherwood. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your valuable and informative speech. And we have learned a lot of things. You have highlighted the uh, certain points uh, which we have to uh, take in consideration of teaching towards uh, approach of VUCA world. And uh, certain certain points such as you have uh, taught, uh, you have said about VUCA values, effects of education, uh, effective learning and models of effective teaching and how creative about how creativity and innovations is necessary and uh, applications and creativity and through so many examples and photographs you have tried to explain each one of things in very detail very minutely you have explained uh, how bird can uh, um, through aeroplane it can give the shape and so many examples and uh, so uh, in short i can say that application and creativity is a innovation which we have to uh, use in our teaching teaching uh, recent recent trends and uh, you also taught uh, said about uh, effective learning and teaching requirement solution to vuca world uh, thank you sir so much for your uh, information and informative session. Um, now I would like to uh, hand over Mahima Kumari for a question answer session. Over to you, Mahima. A 
very good morning to all of you i am mahima kumari and i am here for question answer session before starting this session i want to i would like to ask our speaker can i start this session sir yeah yeah okay okay so let's wait which participant is going to pose their first question yeah yeah so so there is no any so there is one faculty member who want to ask one question so i'll wait here so there is one question from poshali basu what type of innovative teaching learning material must use for comments and economic bed training student for the inter for their internship <clears throat> well um as i told you just now um you can use anything that you uh is up to you you know it's not something that um uh, something specific first you must know what the topic first secondly what is the the aim objective of your lesson meaning that what the student must know okay from there then only thinking of what are the materials that are uh, 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 relevant to that topic so it's it's not uh, uh, really like uh, i can tell you straight forward because i don't know what is your objective you know what is your topic you know so you must that's why when we teach we have to think over even though myself you want to teach something I have to sit down at night, few hours to think about how I want to use a, a very, very specific example, a very good example. It's not necessary uh, through interactive, but you can have uh, your real object to see. You know, for let's say for common, I don't know what what subject. Can can you tell me what subject you want to teach? What topic so that I can you know give example? Thank you, sir. You really give a very splendid answer. I hope the asker will definitely understand your answer. So now let's proceed to second question from our faculty member, Miss Priya Kumari. We have different types of students in our classroom. How we use effective learning? Okay, so we have this one we call it differentiated learning. Differentiated learning. Differentiated learning meaning that. that is a that is one approach one strategy meaning that into uh, a group uh, according to their maybe their knowledge their level of knowledge uh, their level of maturity how they thought and also uh, what the uh, uh, interest so you must teach in different group so that uh, you can fulfill them so that that is we call it a differentiated learning you can google through but of course of course um, that also will have some uh, restriction or limitation because of your time uh, because of your you know the class you know the place to teach uh, but but that is the best thing that you can do or you can have something like you divide the, into a, 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 a tutorial you know? you have a tutorial you know that tutorial will separate the students um, ability into group you know and also in that case also you have to use a different different uh, approach effective learning is not just like it, it, it's not like like static thing effective learning is anything that that able to uh, uh, address the student able to solve their problem so that is effective learning 
So it doesn't matter whatever you want to use. It doesn't mean that, oh, this is effective, this is not effective. The method A should maybe effective for this group of students. But method B should be different group of students. So you have also like game simulation, you know, a lot of things, you know. Uh, you can do all your field work, you know. Uh, you can do some, you know, like, like uh, commerce, you do a business talk, you know. You, know? Uh, you can visit uh, some grocery shop, you know, even <laughs> because I'm not in the commerce. But situational, how to solve, how to bring, as I told you just now, how to bring ab abstracting all the theories in, in, in your subject to a practical, you know, to a practical thing. You see, that's why in, in, in certain uh, countries, um, I met a few friends when, when I presented in the uh, in, in, in overseas. In Germany, for example, students with a BA student, when they come to their final year, they have to attach with the corporate sector. You have to attach with the firm. So I was wondering, why is it BA student, but you attach to the firm? So the answer is that, how you want to see the firm, what is the need of the firm, so that when you come to the classroom, you can teach better to fulfill, to get them a job. That's why sometimes you can see students which, um, you know, they are, they are very excellent in the academic, but they cannot get a job. You know? But some students, they are quite average, but they have a skill. That's why the last one, I put it there, you have a knowledge, you know, you have a skill, you have character, and you have a meta learning. Meta learning is your way how to think. You know, if you work, you know, you as a, uh, some, some officer I, I, when you work, but if you are not able to give ideas, so people will employ you. Yeah? Uh, so effective learning is something that you have to try, something simple, you know, how the student achieves. If the student achieves, so that is effective for that group of particular, not for everybody. Thank you. Hi, our participants. Now, let's proceed to our next question. The question is, what is the significance of metacognition in the ICT teaching and learning from Mrs. Nidula Bhagat, Assistant Professor? Yeah, of course, you can use anything that you want. You can use blogs, you can use you know, social media, anything which is available that can reach the student. You know, uh, but we must have a very open mind the question, the, the problems here is that uh, you know before the pandemic, teachers are reluctant. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sometimes the teachers are, are quite reluctant. Uh, they are not want to learn. You know, uh, but of course, uh, other teachers, uh, quite a number of teachers are very excellent. All these gadgets, but some teachers they are scared of using it. But when you come to uh, pandemic, you have this uh, all this uh, home based learning, so you have no choice. Everybody are excellent. Everybody now can use Google Meet. Everybody can use all the gadgets. But before that, if you ask about Google Meet, how many percent can use it? See? So this is also very important. You can use any one, but the importance is the attitude. And you must use it uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in, in a proper way. It's not just, oh, I'm using a podcast, but you don't know how is the effect. You, need that. you must know how to... Uh, um, do activity. That's why I said just now the from the beginning that you must have activity. You remember the the quotes from the beginning. Learning is not just you know teaching, but it's an activity. So activity derived from the pedagogy. Pedagogy is all the thing that you use. All your aids. Your last time we said teaching aids. All your now we said that uh, uh, media instructional media you use. So you must use instructional media together with the pedagogy. That's why my last one I said that. You know, effective teaching is your 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 potential, uh, your human potential together with pedagogy and with your technology. So you can use anything that you want, but make sure that is proper and relevant and help teachers to, uh, you know, uh, to understanding of the subject. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This answer really makes to change the different thoughts of the teachers or uh, how to manage the class in different way. Now let's uh, move ahead for next question. And the question is, can we use blogs, podcasts, and discussion forums for bring, to bring novelty into our teaching pedagogy from Riz MR? 
I thought I've answered the question <laughs> just now. <laughs> I think it's the same uh, question thing. Uh, you can use anything that was as I just now told you. You can use anything that you want, which is available to the students, and make sure you know how to use it. First, you have to learn it. You know the effect. You know because sometimes uh, the, the this media, instructional media, whatever mentally you use something, we are not familiar. It will be a distraction to the student, and it will be a waste of time. I've seen some of them using, uh, you know, last time we used Google Meet. Uh, you know, nobody uh, give them guidance. In fact, I give some guidance to them. You know, so they use it, but but uh, you know, uh, it's a waste of of time because it doesn't benefit the students. Huh? So you can use anything, but make sure that you know uh, how to use it. You know, and you can uh, really uh, master it, and also to make sure that whatever that you want, you wish to teach, it can be delivered uh, to the students. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Uh, I can read here without technology how the teacher could improve their teaching. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Ah, but I cannot hear you. Okay. Doesn't matter. So I uh, have. Okay. Okay. And the question is without technology, how the teacher could improve their teaching? Yes, sir. So let's proceed to our next question from Khushbu Sinha. Without technology, how the teacher could improve their teaching? Okay. But um, let me tell you something. When we see the word technology, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's not something, don't, don't take it the word as something very big, a very unfamiliar, a very sophisticated thing. Technology is a technique. You know, last time we walk, then you have something to put in to, to dry. You know, last time we have the handphone, you know, the phone without the handphone. I, I, I'm in that uh, stage. You know, now you have a handphone. So that's, that is a technology. So my, my, my personal thing is that please explore Please explore whatever thing that you have now, but it doesn't mean that it should be sophisticated. No, whatever you are having now. Because sometimes, I'm so sorry, some teachers, they are very reluctant to use it. You still want to have chalk and talk, whereas you have few things. Students have their, their handphone. For example, a very simple. Students have your, your, your mobile. You have the mobile. So maybe we can try that first. I think you have tried it you during the pandemic is very successful so but of course not everything that you have your technology maybe you want to teach something field work you want to teach something outside of course you know you cannot uh, uh, use uh, whatever technology you have maybe in future we, we we don't know maybe in future you have all these uh, we call it uh, 7, 7g ish uh, that is now we have the augmented reality. We have a virtual reality. A lot of things coming in. Very yeah. You can put. I I can see um, in 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 India, in Kerala school where you know the state of technology have invented. You can put the elephant in the class. I don't know whether you have watched that or not. I've seen that. Yeah, elephant in the class. That is the the real uh, uh, AR uh, uh, augmented reality. You put the you put the, all the uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, planet, the, the solar system in the classroom. You don't need anything. So this is a coming up. So don't just you know say the mind that we cannot anything. But of course, at this situation, that's why I say that human potential. Teacher is an actor. Ah, do I look like an actor? <laughs> so you must be an actor. Meaning that when you teach, you are not only sitting now, even though you don't have the technology, but you can use all your Everything, your potential, your human potential, your hand, your eyes, your mouth, you know, you know certain expression will, will give some indication to the student. You can use your leaf, whatever available outside there, how, that's why I say creativity. You see the leaf, you see the tree. You must think how this tree can be used as an example to understand your teaching situation. That's why last time I, when I teach, I use one, we call it environment, 
environmental environmental teaching uh, uh, platform. We went to uh, schools, the Aborigine, we call it Orang Asli, Aborigine in the in the uh, 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 forest. No, we don't have all these uh, gadgets. So I want to explain to them uh, how the the, 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 the the rain coming in, how the rain uh, falls, uh, winds. So I took them. We do a station in the forest, then we teach them. In, there is nearby a river there. We have a fish. So a lot of things that we can teach. Hands on. Hands on. So that also is a technology. Technology it doesn't mean that the gadget. Technology is a technique. It cannot be, it's not necessary to be electronic. It can be a real thing. That is also a technology. So back to the, to the, 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 the first one is the human potential. Okay? Human potential. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. You, you give us such a beautiful answer and you, you just explain how our people is more potential than technology as a as our uh, world is uh, developing day by day and technology is coming in our life so thank you sir what a splendid question answer session now i would like to hand over my place to my first anchor miss kweta singh thank you sir many many thanks sir for your gracious presence and we can't forget uh, this is unforgettable session that uh, at the last moment you have joined um, thanks a lot sir and we will not forget your contributions to our, today what you have uh, done that at, at the last moment and your valuable speech, your informati informative session was amazing and we have learned a lot of things today and uh, everything was well and good. Thanks a lot. Sir. Thank you, sir. So here we end our session. Goodbye.